This is my ELAD FDM S2 SDR receiver. It's a 16 bit direct sampling SDR. I've had it for a number of years now. It covers between 9 kilohertz and 52 megahertz on the sort of HF portion. It also covers the FM broadcast band up to 108 megahertz and it covers 135 to 160 megahertz VHF. It's a very well made little receiver. It's not an exciting box to look at like all SDRs. It's surprisingly heavy this if you're used to the um, the RTL uh, dongles or even the SDR display devices which are quite lightweight. This is in a metal box and it's quite a substantial little thing. Not much to see on the front panel. In fact all there is are a couple of LEDs and I'm not see a lot for the front. At the rear we haven't got much more but we have got the on off switch. I normally leave this one on plugged into the computer. Got a USB socket here. We've got a port for the HF antenna, SMA connector. One for the VHF. And we've got a connector here for um, various um, external functions. Not something I personally use on this receiver. The magic with these receivers of course happens when you plug them into the PC. Um, this comes with its own uh, ELAD software which is regularly updated and works very well. It's also capable of being used on various other SDR softwares and um, I quite like SDR console version 3 which is what I mainly run on this receiver. We'll have a look at the software in a moment and what the receiver is capable of but I thought it would just be interesting to look at the uh, physical construction of this little box before we go straight into the software. I believe Elad are bringing out a new model, the FDM S3. I'm not quite sure what the difference is going to be. Um, this SDR will allow you to view a bandwidth of up to 6 megahertz. And the receiver's performance in terms of selectivity and sensitivity is very good. Um, I've got an SDR Play RSP1A which I think is a very good device but I would rate this as a as a better receiver although many people would say it should be because it costs an awful lot more. Let's have a look at the um, radio plugged into the PC and the software in action. Okay I've got the LAD uh, software open and uh, I know I've had this receiver for a number of years I'm not overly familiar with this software because I prefer to use SDR console but there is uh, one reason why I sometimes use this software and we'll come to that in a moment but I thought it would be useful just to see what comes with the receiver. Turn the receiver on by clicking in the, on this button at the bottom left of the screen here and uh, you see that brings the uh, brings the receiver to life and uh, we can turn the volume up for a moment and uh, okay we've got something there now at the moment this receiver is set to a bandwidth of 1.5 megahertz but it's capable of up to 6 megahertz bandwidth we've got zoom buttons here in and out and I can just, this is the, at the moment, the maximum bandwidth we can see. We've got 5.6 uh, megahertz there, 6.6 .6 at the other side, and we're looking at everything in between. In fact, we're looking down to about, I think, um, 5.4. If we go into the settings uh, menu here, and we go over to advanced, you'll see under device configuration this is the bandwidth 1536 that we're, we're looking at at the moment we can drop down to uh, maximum of 6144 let's just click on that for a moment we'll apply that okay so it actually restarts the uh, the receiver We'll close that dialog box. You can see now that we're looking at, uh, let's make sure I'm zoomed out fully. 
That's about it, I think. Yeah. We're looking at a, a wider span. At one end of the spectrum, we're on 3.5 megahertz. And at the far end, we're on 8.4. Okay, so we're looking at all of the signals in between. We can still, of course, zoom in as we wish. And uh, we were on the 49 meter band earlier. We can zoom in there. We can pick out a frequency. And we can listen to that. Right hand of the screen, uh, we've got an attenuator for uh, strong signals. Got a noise blanker. We can uh, alter the mode. We can alter the bandwidth of whichever mode filter we're using. We can alter the uh, automatic gain control here as well. We've got some noise reduction filtering here, which we can vary with this slider to the right. And we've got an auto notch facility. And we can run up to four separate receivers uh, within the bandwidth that we're looking at. And we've got um, various quick buttons here to navigate to uh, to other bands. So we can, exact, we can click on 25 meters, then it takes us uh, straight to that part of the, the band. So, that's a quick look at this. It works okay. I think it's quite a, um, a steep learning curve on this software. The one reason I go to this software from time to time is it has built in, under the mode selection, DRM, which the um, SDR console software doesn't have. And uh, I'll put a clip in of this software receiving DRM. And uh, you'll be able to see and hear how effective that is. Now, having had a look at this, we'll now go to the um, SDR console software and uh, see what you think. Because I think the interface is a lot cleaner on SDR console. So now I've got SDR console open. And this is the software that I use with the ELAD day to day. It's very much a personal preference. I just like the interface. It looks very clean. I find it easy to use. It's not a criticism of the ELAD software. I'm sure if I spent more time with that, I'd, I'd probably be a little bit more at home with it. But let's have a look at SDR console. You can make up your own mind. We'll select the radio we want to use. So it's the FDMS2 that we want. We get that dialog box up when we click select radio. And this is the point now on SDR console where we can set the bandwidth. You can see again it's defaulted to 1.5 as we had uh, earlier in the ELAD software. We can drop down to 6.144 if we want. Higher the bandwidth, the more demanding it is on the resources of your PC. Here I'm running um, an i5 machine with uh, 16 gig of memory. I've also got a video card in there which um, is an uh, NVIDIA video card which does some of the processing work on um, SDR console, so that helps. This machine will comfortably run the receiver at uh, 6 meg bandwidth, um, but you know, if you have a lower memory or perhaps an older machine, you might need to set the bandwidth a bit smaller, otherwise uh, the machine may struggle for resources. Let's click Start. And in a couple of seconds, here we go. We've got the um, SDR coming to life. We'll turn the volume down. It's in the, on the medium wave band at the moment. Let's go back up to, um, now we're on 49 meters, we'll be with the other software. And uh, let's find a, a station. There you go. Okay, we can center the display. We can adjust automatically adjust the um, intensity of the waterfall on the spectrum display by clicking the auto button up here. We can zoom right into the signal we're listening to. That's the maximum zoom there. Or we can zoom right out here on this control and it will display the entire bandwidth that we're looking at similar to as we saw on the ELAD. Got signals on 3.1 here at the low end, 
a 9.1 at the high end and we can gradually zoom in and out okay as we wish ELADS controls are on the right these are on the left we've got mode buttons down here um, usual modes synchronous AM normal AM the sidebands FM CW and so on we've got preset bandwidth filters here we're in AM mode at the moment um, but we can also just zoom in slightly we can also alter the bandwidth simply by clicking on the waterfall here and narrowing or broadening the bandwidth if you'd rather do it that way uh, we've got some quite comprehensive recording controls built into this software as well there's a record playback menu click on record here it allows us to schedule a recording we can set the frequency we wish to record the bandwidth this will record the IQ data and I'll talk about this in another video because I find this absolutely fascinating what we can do is we can record a chunk of data and if we use a 6 megahertz bandwidth for example we could record an hour's worth of data and then later on we can replay it we can actually tune around in within the recording as if we were listening live so um, I'll show you that in, in another video because um, what I'll do from time to time is make a recording when conditions are good and actually um, archive it onto a, a DVD or onto a hard drive and you can actually tune around you imagine being able to do that if you had data from 20 30 years ago and to be able to tune the bands as if you were there fascinating but this allows you to do it. you can also do this with the ELAD software but I just find it a little bit easier with SDR console so it's a very quick overview of the two softwares that I use with my ELAD receiver as I said before it's a very personal choice SDR software um, I believe the ELAD will, will run with some of the other software such as um, HD SDR possibly SDR sharp I'm not sure but because I find this SDR console so nice and easy to use this is the one that I go to unless I want to listen to any uh, DRM mode transmissions there aren't many of those around now on shortwave but there are one or two uh, pardon me there are one or two um, so that's where the ELAD um, software comes in but here you go um, if um, there's any interest I'll do a little bit more in depth on SDR console and what you can use it for that's a quick overview thank you for watching